Are you someone who struggles with finding true happiness in your life? Do you often feel lost, unfulfilled, or unsatisfied? Well, you are not alone. In today's message, I want to share with you some powerful insights and strategies that will help you discover and cultivate your own happiness. I know that it can be a challenging journey, but I am here to remind you that it is possible to turn things around and create a life filled with joy and fulfillment. By the end of this video, you will have a clear understanding of how to find your happiness and create a life that you truly love. So let's get started. Which leads us to number five. Find your happiness by setting and achieving meaningful goals. So how do we go about setting and achieving meaningful goals? It all starts with a vision. You must have a clear vision of what you want your life to look like in the future. Take some time to imagine your ideal life. What does it look like? What are you doing? Who are you surrounded by? What are you feeling? This vision will serve as your compass, guiding you towards your goals. Once you have a clear vision, it's time to turn it into a goal. A goal is simply a dream with a deadline. It's not enough to just have a vision. You must also have a plan to make it a reality. And that plan starts with setting smart goals. Specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-bound. Let me give you an example. If your vision is to become financially free, your goal could be to save $100,000 in the next five years. This goal is specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-bound. But setting goals is only half the battle. The real work begins when you start taking action towards achieving those goals. And let me tell you, it's not always going to be easy. There will be obstacles, challenges, and setbacks along the way. But it's how you handle those challenges that will determine your success. Successful people are not immune to failures and setbacks. They just have a different mindset. They see failures as opportunities to learn and grow, rather than as roadblocks to their success. They understand that every failure brings them one step closer to their goal. And they use it as motivation to keep going. So my friends, don't be afraid to fail. Embrace it, learn from it, and keep moving forward towards your goals. Remember, it's not about how many times you fall. It's about how many times you get back up. Another important aspect of achieving meaningful goals is to have a plan. As the saying goes, a goal without a plan is just a wish. You must have a detailed plan of action that outlines the steps you need to take to reach your goal. And don't be afraid to adjust your plan along the way. Life is unpredictable, and sometimes we may need to pivot and change our approach. But as long as we stay focused on our vision and keep taking action, we will eventually reach our goals. Now let's talk about the importance of celebrating your wins. It's easy to get caught up in the hustle and forget to acknowledge our achievements. But it's essential to take a moment to celebrate and appreciate how far we have come. This not only boosts our confidence and motivation, but also reminds us of why we started in the first place. And finally, the most crucial aspect of setting and achieving meaningful goals is to never lose sight of what truly matters in life. It's easy to get caught up in the pursuit of success and forget about our relationships, health, and overall well-being. But true happiness comes from finding a balance and prioritizing what truly matters to us. In the words of the great Zig Ziglar, you can have everything in life you want if you will just help enough other people get what they want. So as you set and achieve your goals, don't forget to give back and make a positive impact on those around you. Which leads us to number four. Find your happiness by taking care of your physical and mental health. You see, our physical and mental health are the foundation upon which we build our happiness. Without a strong foundation, everything else will crumble. How can you truly be happy if your body is constantly in pain, or if your mind is filled with negative thoughts? How can you enjoy the beautiful moments in life if you are constantly battling with physical or mental illness? The truth is, you cannot. Happiness and good health go hand in hand, and it is our responsibility to take care of both. Now I'm not saying that you have to be a fitness guru or a meditation master to be happy. No, not at all. What I am saying is that we must make an effort to take care of our bodies and minds in whatever way works best for us. It could be as simple as going for a walk every day, eating nutritious meals, getting enough rest, or practicing mindfulness and gratitude. The key is to find what works for you and make it a priority. Our bodies are like temples, and we must treat them with respect and care. We only have one body, and it is our responsibility to keep it healthy and strong. And let me tell you, when we take care of our bodies, 
we not only feel physically better, but also feel more confident, energized, and ready to take on the world. And that, my friends, is a recipe for happiness. But it's not just about our physical health. Our mental health is just as important, if not more. In today's fast-paced and constantly changing world, it is easy to get caught up in the chaos and neglect our mental well-being. We are bombarded with stress, pressure, and expectations from all angles, and it can take a toll on our mental health. But the good news is, there are things we can do to take care of our minds and find inner peace and happiness. One of the most powerful tools for improving mental health is mindfulness. It is the practice of being present in the moment and being aware of our thoughts and feelings without judgment. When we are mindful, we can better manage our stress, anxiety, and negative thoughts. It allows us to let go of the past and not worry about the future, and instead focus on the present and appreciate the little things in life. Another important aspect of taking care of our mental health is self-care. This means taking time for ourselves to do things that bring us joy and recharge our batteries. It could be reading a book, taking a hot bath, or spending time with loved ones. Whatever it may be, make sure to prioritize self-care and make it a regular part of your routine. Now I'm not saying that taking care of our physical and mental health will completely eliminate all the challenges and struggles in life. No, that is not realistic. But what it does is equip us with the strength, resilience, and positive mindset to handle whatever comes our way. And that, my friends, is the key to finding true and lasting happiness. Which leads us to number three. Find your happiness by practicing gratitude. First and foremost, we must understand that gratitude is a choice. It is a mindset that we can choose to adopt regardless of our circumstances. We often think that we will be grateful when we have achieved a certain goal or acquired a certain possession. But the truth is, gratitude is not a result of our external circumstances. It is a result of our internal state of mind. We can choose to be grateful for what we have right now, in this very moment. We all have something to be grateful for. It could be something as simple as having a roof over our heads, food on our table, or the love of our family and friends. When we focus on what we have rather than what we lack, we automatically shift our perspective towards a more positive and grateful mindset. And this is where the magic happens. When we are grateful for what we have, we attract more of it into our lives. Secondly, gratitude allows us to appreciate the present moment. We often get so caught up in our past regrets and future worries that we forget to live in the present. But the truth is, the present moment is all we have. And by practicing gratitude, we can fully immerse ourselves in the present and appreciate all the little things that we often take for granted. For example, have you ever stopped to appreciate the beauty of a sunset, the sound of birds chirping, or the taste of your favorite meal? These are all simple things that we can be grateful for in the present moment. When we learn to appreciate the small things, we realize that they are actually the big things in life. And this brings us a sense of joy and contentment that cannot be found anywhere else. Lastly, gratitude allows us to shift our focus from ourselves to others. As human beings, we have a natural tendency to be self-centered. We are constantly thinking about our own needs, wants, and desires. But when we practice gratitude, we shift our focus to others. We start to appreciate the people in our lives, the kindness of strangers, and the beauty of the world around us. When we focus on others, we realize that we are not alone in this world. We are all connected, and our actions and words have the power to impact others in a positive way. By expressing gratitude towards others, we not only make them feel appreciated, but also create a ripple effect of kindness and positivity in the world. Which leads us to number two. Find your happiness by surrounding yourself with positive people. The people you surround yourself with have a tremendous impact on your life. They can either lift you up or bring you down, inspire you or discourage you, support you or hold you back. That's why it is crucial to choose your company wisely. Negative people have a way of spreading their negativity like a virus. They complain, criticize and find faults in everything, and before you know it, you start to feel the same way. On the other hand, positive people radiate positivity, and their energy is contagious. They uplift us, motivate us, and make us believe in ourselves. They inspire us to be better and do better. They support us and encourage us to chase our dreams. They bring joy and happiness into our lives. Surrounding yourself with positive people is not just about finding happiness. It's about creating a positive and fulfilling life.
It's about surrounding yourself with people who will help you grow and become the best version of yourself. It's about creating a supportive network that will be there for you through thick and thin. So how do we surround ourselves with positive people? First and foremost, we need to be aware of the people we currently have in our lives. Are they positive or negative? Do they bring us joy? Or do they drain our energy? Once we become aware, we need to make a conscious effort to distance ourselves from negative people. It may not be easy, but it is necessary for our own happiness. Next, we need to actively seek out positive people. Look for people who radiate positivity, who have a positive outlook on life, and who inspire and motivate you. Attend events, join groups, and engage in activities that align with your interests and values. This will help you meet like-minded individuals who will have a positive impact on your life. Furthermore, we need to be mindful of the conversations we have with people. Avoid gossip and negative talk. Instead, focus on positive and uplifting discussions. This will not only make you feel better but also attract more positive people into your life. And lastly, be a positive person yourself. Like attracts like. If you want to surround yourself with positive people, you need to be a positive person. Be kind. Be supportive, and be uplifting. Spread positivity wherever you go, and you will attract positive people into your life. Which leads us to number one. Find your happiness by identifying your passions and purpose. Your passions and purpose are the keys to unlocking the door to your happiness. They are the fuel that will drive you towards a life of fulfillment and joy. Your passions are the things that make your heart skip a beat. The things that you could spend hours doing without feeling tired or bored. They could be anything, writing, painting, playing an instrument, or even cooking. These passions are like a compass, guiding you towards your true purpose in life. But how do you identify your passions? The first step is to try new things. Don't be afraid to step out of your comfort zone and explore different activities. You never know. You might discover a hidden talent or a new passion that you never knew existed. The second step is to pay attention to your emotions. What makes you happy? What makes you feel alive? These are the things that you should pursue. Once you have identified your passions, the next step is to align them with your purpose. Your purpose is your reason for being, your unique contribution to the world. It is the reason you wake up every morning, and the driving force behind everything you do. And when your passions and purpose align, that's when the magic happens. That's when you find true happiness. But identifying your passions and purpose is not a one-time thing. It is an ongoing process. As you grow and evolve, your passions and purpose may also change, and that's okay. Embrace the change and keep exploring new things. That's the beauty of life. It's a journey of self-discovery. Some of you may be thinking, but how can I pursue my passions and purpose if I have a job that I don't enjoy and bills to pay? My answer to that is to start small. You don't have to quit your job and pursue your passions full-time. You can start by dedicating a few hours every week to your passions. It could be early in the morning before work, or in the evening after work. The important thing is to make time for what truly makes you happy. And for those of you who are lucky enough to have a job that aligns with your passions and purpose, I applaud you. But let me remind you that even in those moments, it is important to take a step back and reflect. Are you still passionate about what you do? Is it still aligned with your purpose? If not, it's never too late to make a change. Don't settle for a life that doesn't bring you joy. Life is too short to live without purpose and passion. Don't let fear or societal expectations hold you back from pursuing what truly makes you happy. As the saying goes, if you do what you love, you'll never work a day in your life. So go out there and explore. Try new things. And never stop searching for your passions and purpose. And when you find them, hold on to them and let them guide you towards a life of true happiness. Thank you. I'm thrilled to share with you five effective methods for discovering your life's purpose. Are you someone who grapples with feeling adrift or uncertain about your life's direction? Do you often find yourself questioning whether you're on the right path or fully realizing your potential? If so, you're not alone. In today's message, we'll explore the concept of purpose and how you can uncover yours. I understand firsthand the frustration of feeling like you're simply going through the motions without a clear purpose or direction. However, I also know it doesn't have to be that way. By absorbing this message and applying the five strategies I'm about to outline, you can change course and begin living a life brimming with passion, fulfillment, and purpose. So, 
If you're eager to unearth your true purpose and embark on your journey to living your best life, let's dive in. We'll begin with number five, discovering your life's purpose by tuning into your inner voice. What exactly do I mean by your inner voice? It's that small voice within you that offers guidance and direction. Some may refer to it as intuition, while others might call it their gut feeling. Regardless of the terminology, it's a potent tool that we often overlook in our pursuit of purpose. We inhabit a world inundated with external noise, constantly bombarded by information, opinions, and expectations. Amidst this cacophony, our inner voice can easily be drowned out. We're told what to do, how to think, and who to be. But amidst this chaos, we forget to listen to ourselves. We neglect our inner voice, which serves as our true compass in life. But why is it essential to heed our inner voice? Because it represents our authentic self. It knows our deepest desires, true passions, and unique purpose. It remains uninfluenced by societal pressures, emanating instead from our innermost essence. When we attune ourselves to this voice, we align with our true purpose in life. I understand that some of you might wonder, but Jim, how do I even listen to my inner voice? I don't even know what it sounds like. Well, my friends, the initial step is to create space for it. Often our daily lives keep us so occupied that we forget to be still and attentive. We're constantly on the move, checking our phones, scrolling through social media, and filling our minds with external distractions. However, if we genuinely seek to discover our purpose, we must carve out space for our inner voice to be heard. This can be achieved through practices like meditation, journaling, or simply immersing ourselves in nature. Find a tranquil spot where you can be alone with your thoughts, allowing your mind to quiet down. It is in this serenity that your inner voice begins to articulate itself. I must caution you though, your inner voice may not always manifest loudly and distinctly. It might present itself as a sensation, an intuition, or a subtle prompting. Yet the more room you create for it, the clearer it becomes. And the more attentively you listen, the stronger it resonates. However, merely listening to your inner voice isn't sufficient. You must also muster the courage to heed its guidance. Your inner voice may steer you toward a path divergent from societal expectations. It might compel you to take risks, affect changes, and step beyond your comfort zone. Yet, it is precisely in these moments of discomfort that we experience growth. By following our inner voice, we unearth our purpose. I speak from personal experience. Initially, when I embarked on my journey of personal development, my inner voice urged me to share my knowledge and experiences with others. At the time, as a shy and introverted individual, the idea of public speaking petrified me. Nevertheless, I heeded my inner voice's counsel, and here I stand today addressing all of you and impacting lives globally. This brings us to number four, discovering your purpose by seeking guidance from others. Each of us is endowed with unique talents, gifts, and passions. However, sometimes it necessitates others' perspectives to discern our potential. While we may harbor an inkling of our purpose, it is through others' guidance that we refine and harness it into a potent force propelling us toward success. I anticipate some of you may harbor reservations. Isn't seeking guidance from others a sign of weakness? Shouldn't we ascertain our purpose independently? My response to that is no. We aren't meant to traverse life's journey alone. We require one another's wisdom, experience, and counsel to realize our fullest potential. Consider this. The most accomplished individuals in the world didn't ascend to their height single-handedly. They availed themselves of mentors, coaches, and advisors who steered them along the way. They sought guidance from those who had already traversed the path they aspired to tread. That, my friends, is the crux of discovering your purpose in life. How do we go about seeking guidance from others? Well, the first step is to surround yourself with the right people. You become the average of the five people you spend the most time with. So choose wisely. Surround yourself with individuals who inspire and challenge you. Those who have achieved what you aspire to achieve. Next. It's crucial to be open to learning from others. Too often, our egos hinder us, convincing us that we already know everything. However, the truth is, there's always something to learn from others. Being humble and open-minded allows us to be amazed at the wisdom and knowledge others can offer. Another significant aspect of seeking guidance from others is to ask for help. This may be challenging for some, as they perceive it as a sign of weakness. 
but let me assure you, asking for help is a sign of strength. It demonstrates your willingness to do whatever it takes to achieve your goals and fulfill your purpose. When seeking assistance, be specific about your needs. This not only aids the person providing advice, but also helps you gain clarity regarding your own purpose and goals. Now let's address something that may be holding some of you back from seeking guidance from others. The fear of rejection or criticism. Let me tell you, rejection and criticism are part and parcel of life. While they may not be pleasant, they are necessary for growth. Embrace them and utilize them as fuel to become better, to evolve into the best version of yourself. Finally, I want to emphasize the importance of being grateful for the guidance and support you receive from others. Take the time to express gratitude to those who have assisted you along your journey. Not only is it the right thing to do, but it also demonstrates that you value their guidance and are willing to continue learning from them. This brings us to number three. Finding your purpose in life by exploring different experiences. What do I mean by this? Well, let me explain. We are all unique individuals with different talents, passions, and interests. The only way to truly understand our purpose is by exploring these different facets of ourselves. Consider this. How can you know what you're truly passionate about if you haven't tried different things? How can you identify your strengths if you haven't challenged yourself in various areas? How can you determine what brings you joy and fulfillment if you haven't experienced different things? The truth is, we often limit ourselves by staying in our comfort zones and repeating the same routines. However, the magic happens when we step out of our comfort zones and try new experiences. It opens up a whole new world of possibilities and helps us discover our purpose. So my friends, I urge you to start exploring different experiences. It can be something as simple as trying a new hobby or something more significant like traveling to a new country. The key is to expose yourself to new things and be open to learning and growing. Now I understand that some of you may be thinking, but Jim, I don't have the time or resources to explore different experiences. To that, I say, nonsense. You don't need a lot of time or money to try new things. It can be as simple as taking a different route to work or trying a new dish at a restaurant. The point is to break out of your routine and expose yourself to new experiences. Let me tell you, my friends, the more experiences you have, the more you will learn about yourself. You will discover your strengths, your weaknesses, your likes, and your dislikes. All of this will lead you closer to your purpose. But it's not just about trying new things. It's also about embracing failure. You see, when we try new experiences, we are bound to fail at some point. But that's okay. Failure is not the end. It's just a stepping stone toward success. It teaches us valuable lessons and helps us grow as individuals. So don't be afraid to fail. Embrace it and use it as a learning opportunity. And finally, my friends, I want to leave you with this. Exploring different experiences is not a one-time thing, it's a continuous process. As we grow and evolve as individuals, our purpose may also change, and that's okay. Embrace the journey of self-discovery and never stop exploring new experiences. Which leads us to number two. Find your purpose in life by identifying your values and beliefs. Now I know some of you may be wondering why this step is so important. Well, let me tell you. Your values and beliefs are like the compass that guides you towards your true purpose. They are your guiding principles, your moral code, and your inner compass. Without them, you may find yourself lost and wandering aimlessly, unsure of where you are headed. Think of your values and beliefs as the roots of a tree. They provide stability and nourishment, allowing the tree to grow tall and strong. Similarly, when you are clear on your values and beliefs, you can build a solid foundation for your life one that can withstand any storm that comes your way. So the question is, how do we identify our values and beliefs? The first step is to reflect on your life and think about what truly matters to you. What are the things that you hold dear? What principles do you live by? These could be anything from honesty, integrity, kindness, compassion, or hard work. Take a moment to write down these values and beliefs. This exercise will give you a clear picture of what is important to you. The next step is to examine your actions and decisions. Are they aligned with your values and beliefs? Do they reflect who you truly are? If not, it may be time to reevaluate and make some changes. Remember, your values and beliefs should be the guiding force in your life. And if your actions do not align with them, you may feel a sense of inner conflict and dissatisfaction. Another way to identify your values and beliefs is to look at the people you admire and respect. 
What qualities do they possess that you admire? It could be their determination, their kindness, or their resilience. These are the values and beliefs that resonate with you, and it is a reflection of who you are at your core. It is also essential to understand that our values and beliefs may change over time. As we grow and evolve, our priorities may shift, and that is perfectly okay. What was important to us in our 20s may not hold the same significance in our 40s. So it is crucial to regularly reflect on our values and beliefs and make adjustments accordingly. Now some of you may be thinking, but Jim, how do my values and beliefs relate to my purpose in life? Well, let me tell you, your purpose in life should be a reflection of your values and beliefs. It should be something that aligns with who you are and what you stand for. When you are clear on your values and beliefs, your purpose becomes crystal clear. For example, if one of your core values is compassion, then your purpose may revolve around helping others and making a positive impact in the world. If hard work is something you hold dear, then your purpose may be to achieve success and reach your full potential. Do you see how your values and beliefs can guide you towards your purpose in life? Now, I want to address something that may be holding some of you back from identifying your values and beliefs. Fear. You may be afraid that your values and beliefs are not good enough or that others may judge you for them. But let me tell you, your values and beliefs are unique to you, and that is something to be celebrated. Embrace them and let them guide you towards your purpose. Do not let fear hold you back from living a life true to yourself. Which leads us to number one. Find your purpose in life by reflecting on your passions and interests. You see, each and every one of us has a unique purpose in this world. We are not here by accident. We are here for a reason. But the question is, how do we discover this purpose? How do we find our true calling in life? The answer lies within ourselves, in our passions and interests. Our passions and interests are not just mere hobbies or activities that we enjoy. They are a reflection of our inner desires, our true selves. They are the things that bring us joy, fulfillment, and a sense of purpose. And when we take the time to reflect on them, we can uncover our true purpose in life. Now I know some of you may be thinking, but Jim, I don't have any passions or interests. I don't know what I'm passionate about. And to that, I say, take a moment and think back to your childhood. What were the things that made you happy? What were the activities that you couldn't wait to do? It could be anything from playing sports to painting to solving puzzles. These childhood passions and interests are often the key to unlocking our purpose in life. But for those of you who do have a clear idea of your passions and interests, I urge you to take the time to reflect on them. Ask yourself, why do I enjoy this? What does it bring to my life? How can I incorporate it into my daily routine? By reflecting on these questions, you can gain a deeper understanding of yourself and your purpose in life. Now I must warn you, finding your purpose in life is not a one-time event. It is an ongoing process. Our passions and interests may change as we grow and evolve, and that's okay. The important thing is to always be open to exploring new things and to never stop reflecting on what truly makes us happy. But I must also address the elephant in the room. Many of us may have passions and interests that are not considered practical or realistic by society standards. And this can often lead us to ignore or downplay these passions in pursuit of a more socially acceptable path. But I am here to tell you, do not let society standards dictate your purpose in life. If you have a burning passion for something, Pursue it with all your heart. Trust me, the world needs more people who are truly passionate about what they do. I also want to emphasize that our purpose in life is not always tied to our careers. While some of us may find our purpose through our work, others may find it through volunteer work, hobbies, or even relationships. The key is to find what brings us joy and fulfillment and to make it a part of our lives in whatever way we can. Now. I want to address the fear that often comes with pursuing our passions and interests. We may fear failure, judgment, or even success. But I want to remind you that the only true failure in life is not trying at all. And as for judgment, remember that the opinions of others do not define us. And as for success, embrace it and use it as a platform to inspire others to find their own purpose in life. I urge you to take the time to reflect on your passions and interests. They hold the key to your purpose in life. Embrace them, pursue them, and never stop exploring and reflecting. As I always say, the greatest gift you can give yourself is the gift of self-discovery. So go out there and find your purpose, and in doing so, you will not only transform your own life, 
but you will also inspire others to do the same. Thank you. I am thrilled to be here with you today. Are you someone who often struggles with staying focused on your goals? Do you find yourself frequently getting sidetracked by obstacles and challenges? If so, you're not alone. In today's fast-paced world, it's easy to become overwhelmed by chaos and lose sight of our objectives. But fear not, because in today's message, I'm going to share with you five powerful methods to shift your focus from obstacles to your goals. These strategies are ones I've personally used and have assisted countless individuals in achieving success in their lives. So, if you're ready to turn things around and begin living a life of purpose and fulfillment, I encourage you to stay tuned and take notes. By the end of this, you will have the tools and mindset to conquer any obstacle that comes your way. Let's dive in and learn how to focus on our goals rather than our obstacles. Starting with number five, focus on goals, not obstacles, by learning from setbacks. This is a crucial lesson that I've learned throughout my journey toward success. It's not about the obstacles we face, but how we respond to them that truly matters. It's about shifting our focus from the problem to the solution, from the obstacle to the goal. And the key to doing so is by learning from our setbacks. When we face a setback, it's easy to become discouraged and lose sight of our goals. We start questioning ourselves, our abilities, and our decisions. But what we fail to realize is that setbacks are not failures. They're opportunities for growth and learning. They're the stepping stones toward our ultimate success. Think about it. Every successful person has faced setbacks in their journey. From Steve Jobs to Oprah Winfrey, from Walt Disney to J.K. Rowling. They've all faced failures and setbacks. But what sets them apart is their ability to learn from these setbacks and use them as fuel to propel themselves toward their goals. So, how do we learn from our setbacks? The first step is to accept them. Accept that setbacks are a part of the journey toward success. Don't let them define you or discourage you. Instead, use them as a learning opportunity. Analyze what went wrong, what could have been done differently, and what lessons can be learned from the experience. The second step is to shift our focus from the problem to the solution. Instead of dwelling on the setback, focus on finding a solution. Remember, every problem has a solution, and it's up to us to find it. This shift in focus will not only help us find a way out of the setback, but also keep us motivated towards our goals. The third step is to surround ourselves with positivity. When we face a setback, it's easy to get caught up in negative thoughts and emotions. But it's during these times that we need to surround ourselves with positivity. This could be in the form of supportive friends and family, motivational books and videos, or even positive affirmations. The key is to stay positive and keep moving forward. The fourth step is to never give up. As cliche as it may sound, setbacks are temporary, but giving up is permanent. We must remember that success is not a destination. It's a journey, and setbacks are a part of that journey. So, no matter how many times you fall, get back up and keep moving towards your goals. And finally, the fifth step is to use setbacks as a learning experience. As I mentioned earlier, setbacks are not failures. They're opportunities for growth and learning. Use them to identify your weaknesses, learn from your mistakes, and come back stronger and wiser. As the saying goes, a smooth sea never made a skilled sailor. It's the storms and rough seas that make us stronger and better equipped to face any challenges that come our way. Which leads us to number four. Focus on goals, not obstacles, by surrounding yourself with supportive people. This is a crucial step in achieving success, and I cannot stress it enough. The people you surround yourself with have a huge impact on your mindset, your motivation, and ultimately your success. Have you ever been in a situation where you were feeling down and discouraged? But then you spoke to a friend or a loved one who lifted your spirits and reminded you of your goals. Or have you ever been in a group of people who were constantly complaining and bringing each other down, and you found yourself feeling unmotivated and negative? This is the power of the people we surround ourselves with. You are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. This statement holds so much truth. The people we surround ourselves with have a direct influence on our thoughts, attitudes, and actions. If you surround yourself with negative and unsupportive people, it's only natural that you will start to adopt their mindset and behaviors. On the other hand, if you surround yourself with positive and supportive people, you will be uplifted and motivated to achieve your goals. So, how do we surround ourselves with supportive people? First and foremost, we need to be aware of the people we are currently spending the most time with. 
Are they positive and supportive? Do they encourage and motivate you? If the answer is no, then it may be time to reevaluate those relationships. This doesn't mean you have to cut people out of your life, but it does mean that you may need to limit your time with them and seek out more positive and supportive relationships. Secondly, we need to actively seek out supportive people. This can be through networking events, joining clubs or groups that align with our goals and interests, or even reaching out to mentors or coaches. These people can provide us with valuable guidance, motivation, and support on our journey towards our goals. But it's not just about surrounding ourselves with supportive people. It's also about being a supportive person ourselves. We must be willing to support and uplift others on their journey towards their goals. Not only does this create a positive and supportive environment, but it also allows us to learn from others and gain different perspectives. Surrounding ourselves with supportive people also means being open to constructive criticism. We all have blind spots and areas where we can improve, and having supportive people who can provide us with honest feedback is crucial for our growth and success. We must be willing to listen to their advice and make necessary changes to better ourselves. Lastly, we must remember that we are ultimately responsible for our own success. While surrounding ourselves with supportive people is important, it's ultimately up to us to take action towards our goals. We must have the determination and drive to overcome obstacles and stay focused on our goals, even when those around us may not understand or support our journey. Which leads us to number three. Focus on goals, not obstacles, by staying positive. This is a crucial step in your journey towards success. Have you ever noticed that when you are feeling positive, you are more motivated, energetic, and productive? That's because positivity has the power to fuel our minds and bodies, and it's essential to maintain a positive mindset when faced with obstacles. So, how can we stay positive in the face of challenges? The first step is to understand that obstacles are a part of life. We cannot control what happens to us, but we can control how we react to it. Instead of viewing obstacles as roadblocks, See them as opportunities for growth and learning. Remember, every obstacle is a chance to prove to yourself how strong and capable you truly are. The next step is to surround yourself with positivity. As the saying goes, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. So, use your company wisely. Surround yourself with people who uplift you, motivate you, and believe in you. Their positive energy will reflect onto you and you will find it easier to stay positive even in the face of adversity. Another way to stay positive is to practice gratitude. Take a moment every day to reflect on the things you are grateful for in your life. It could be something as simple as having a roof over your head, or a supportive family. Gratitude shifts our focus from what we lack to what we have, and it is a powerful tool in maintaining a positive mindset. Moreover, it is crucial to have a clear vision of your goals and to remind yourself of them daily. When you have a clear picture of what you want to achieve, it becomes easier to stay positive and motivated. Write down your goals, create a vision board, or visualize yourself achieving them. This will give you a sense of direction and purpose, and it will be easier to focus on your goals rather than the obstacles. In addition to these steps, it is essential to take care of your physical and mental well-being. Exercise regularly, eat healthy, and get enough rest. A healthy body and mind are vital in staying positive and focused. Remember, you cannot pour from an empty cup, so take care of yourself first. Furthermore, when faced with obstacles, it is crucial to have positive self-talk. Our thoughts have a powerful impact on our actions and emotions, so instead of dwelling on the negative, replace them with positive affirmations. Tell yourself, I can do this. I am strong and capable. I have overcome challenges before, and I can do it again. These positive affirmations will help you stay focused on your goals, and not on the obstacles. Lastly, I want to remind you that staying positive is a choice. It's not always easy, but it is a choice that we must make every day. We have the power to control our thoughts, and it is up to us to choose positivity over negativity. Remember, the more you practice positivity, the easier it becomes, and soon it will become a habit. Which leads us to number two. Focus on goals, not obstacles, by breaking down your goals into smaller tasks. We all have dreams and aspirations, but it takes more than just wishful thinking to turn them into reality. It takes focus, determination, and a clear plan of action. One of the biggest mistakes people make when setting goals is not breaking them down into smaller achievable tasks. We often get overwhelmed by the enormity of our goals and end up feeling discouraged and defeated. 
But what if I told you that by breaking down your goals into smaller tasks, you can not only stay focused but also make significant progress towards achieving them? Think of it this way. Imagine you want to climb Mount Everest. It's a daunting task, to say the least. But if you break it down into smaller tasks, such as training, acquiring the necessary gear, and mapping out your route, suddenly the goal seems more manageable. The same principle applies to any goal you set for yourself. By breaking it down into smaller tasks, you can create a clear roadmap toward success. Now, I understand that breaking down goals into smaller tasks may seem tedious and time-consuming, but let me tell you, the time and effort you invest in this process will pay off tenfold. Not only will it keep you focused, but it will also help you to identify any potential obstacles and come up with solutions to overcome them. Furthermore, breaking down your goals into smaller tasks allows you to celebrate your progress along the way. As you tick off each task, you will feel a sense of accomplishment and motivation to keep going. This positive reinforcement will help you stay focused and motivated to push through any obstacles that may come your way. Let me share with you a personal example. When I first started my career as a motivational speaker, my ultimate goal was to become one of the most sought-after speakers in the world. It was a big, audacious goal, and I knew I couldn't achieve it overnight. So I broke it down into smaller tasks. I started by attending local speaking events and honing my craft. Then I moved on to speaking at conferences and seminars. Each step brought me closer to my ultimate goal, and before I knew it, I was speaking on stages around the world. But let me be clear. Breaking down your goals into smaller tasks does not mean you should lower your standards or settle for mediocrity. On the contrary, it allows you to set realistic and achievable milestones that will ultimately lead you to your bigger goal. It also gives you the opportunity to reassess and adjust your plan if necessary. Remember, the path to success is not always a straight line, and it's okay to make adjustments along the way. So how do you break down your goals into smaller tasks? The first step is to start with the end in mind. What is your ultimate goal? What do you want to achieve? Once you have a clear vision, break it down into smaller achievable tasks. Make sure these tasks are specific, measurable, and have a deadline. This will help you stay on track and hold yourself accountable. Next, prioritize your tasks. Identify which tasks are urgent and which ones can be done at a later time. This will help you manage your time effectively and ensure that you are focusing on the most important tasks first. Lastly, don't be afraid to ask for help. Surround yourself with people who support and believe in your goals. Seek guidance and advice from those who have achieved similar goals. Remember, success is not a solo journey, and having a support system can make all the difference. Which leads us to number one. Focus on goals, not obstacles, by developing a clear vision. You may be wondering, what does that even mean? How can having a clear vision help me achieve my goals? Let me tell you, having a clear vision is like having a roadmap to your destination. It gives you direction, purpose, and motivation to keep moving forward, even when faced with challenges. Many of us have big dreams and aspirations, but we often get stuck in the day-to-day -day routine and forget about the bigger picture. We get caught up in the obstacles that come our way, and we lose sight of our goals. But I am here to remind you that obstacles are a part of the journey, and they should not deter you from achieving your dreams. So how do we develop a clear vision? The first step is to know what you want. It may sound simple, but trust me, many people don't have a clear idea of what they want in life. They have vague goals like, I want to be successful, or I want to be happy. But what does success or happiness mean to you? You need to define your goals and be specific about what you want to achieve. The next step is to write it down. This may seem like a trivial task. But writing down your goals has a powerful effect on your mind. It makes them tangible, and it also serves as a constant reminder of what you are working towards. Write down your goals in detail, and be as specific as possible. This will help you create a clear vision in your mind. Once you have a clear idea of what you want and have written it down, the next step is to create a plan. A vision without a plan is just a dream. You need to break down your goals into smaller achievable steps. This will not only help you stay focused, but it will also give you a sense of accomplishment as you tick off each step towards your ultimate goal. Now let's talk about obstacles. As I mentioned earlier, obstacles are a part of the journey, and they should not stop you from reaching your goals. In fact, obstacles can be a blessing in disguise. They can teach you valuable lessons, make you stronger, and help you grow. 
But how do we stay focused on our goals when faced with obstacles? The answer is simple, by keeping our vision in mind. When you have a clear vision, you are not easily swayed by temporary setbacks. You know where you are headed, and you are determined to get there no matter what. So when an obstacle comes your way, instead of dwelling on it, ask yourself, how can I overcome this and still stay on track towards my goal? This shift in mindset will help you find solutions and keep moving forward. Another essential aspect of developing a clear vision is to surround yourself with the right people. Jim Rohn famously said, You are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. So if you want to achieve big things, you need to surround yourself with people who have a clear vision and are working towards their goals. These people will inspire and motivate you, and they will also hold you accountable for your actions. Lastly, I want to remind you that having a clear vision is not a one-time thing. It is an ongoing process. As you grow and evolve, your goals may change, and that's okay. You need to constantly review and adjust your vision accordingly. The important thing is to always have a clear direction in mind. Know what you want, write it down, create a plan, and surround yourself with the right people. And most importantly, always keep your vision in mind, even when faced with challenges. Remember, Obstacles are just temporary, but your vision will lead you to your ultimate destination. Thank you. If you go to work on your goals, your goals will go to work on you. If you go to work on your plan, your plan will go to work on you. Whatever good things we build, end up building us. We all have 24 hours a day. Either you run the day, or the day runs you. Therefore, you have to learn how to use your time wisely to achieve your goals. Each day, Goal setting is powerful because it provides focus. It shapes our dreams. It gives us the ability to hone in on the exact actions we need to perform to achieve everything we desire in life. In today's busy world, it's easy to feel overwhelmed by lots of tasks and distractions. We're often told that multitasking is the way to go, but actually trying to do too much at once can make us less productive and successful. That's why we're here today to talk about why it's important to focus on one thing at a time and how it can make a big difference in our lives. I've been there, trying to juggle many things at once and feeling like I'm constantly falling behind. But I've learned that it doesn't have to be that way. By learning to concentrate on one thing at a time, we can actually get more done and achieve our goals more effectively. So if you're someone who often feels overwhelmed and scattered, know that you're not alone. And by listening to this message, you're already taking the first step towards taking back control of your time and energy. Let's dive in and explore five simple ways to focus on one thing at a time and ultimately achieve greater success in our lives. Let's kick off with number five. The fifth way to concentrate on one task at a time and reach your goals is by taking breaks. Now, I can almost hear you thinking, taking breaks? That sounds like an excuse to procrastinate and waste time. But hear me out, friends. Taking breaks isn't about slacking off. It's about recharging your batteries and sharpening your focus. In our fast-paced world, we're bombarded with information and responsibilities nonstop. We're expected to be on top of everything all the time. But amidst this chaos, we often forget to take care of ourselves. We forget to pause, breathe, and give our minds and bodies the rest they need. Here's the thing though. We're not robots. We're human beings. And just like any machine, we need maintenance to function at our best. That's where taking breaks comes in. When we take breaks, we give ourselves a chance to recharge and refocus. We allow our minds to rest and our bodies to relax. And when we return to our tasks, we're more energized, motivated, and focused. We can tackle our goals with renewed vigor and determination. But taking breaks isn't just about physical rest. It's about mental rest, too. Our minds need time to process information, reflect, and come up with new ideas and solutions. Think about it. How many times have you been stuck on a problem, only to take a break and return with a fresh perspective and a solution. Taking breaks allows us to tap into our creativity and come up with new and innovative ideas. Let me be clear, taking breaks doesn't mean being lazy. It means being intentional with our time. It means prioritizing our mental and physical well-being to achieve our goals in the long run. I know some of you might be thinking, but I have so much to do, I can't afford to take breaks. But trust me, my friends, you can't afford not to take breaks. I've been there, pushing myself to the limit in pursuit of my goals. But I've learned that taking breaks is not a luxury, it's a necessity. In fact, studies have shown that taking breaks can increase productivity and creativity. So if you want to achieve your goals, 
you must make taking breaks a priority. And here are some other tips to help you incorporate breaks into your daily routine. Firstly, schedule your breaks just like you schedule your tasks and appointments. Set aside specific times throughout the day to take a break. This will help you stay on track with your tasks and give you something to look forward to. By earmarking specific times throughout the day to pause and recharge, we not only fortify our commitment to productivity, but also furnish ourselves with a tangible incentive to persevere through our endeavors. Indeed, the act of scheduling breaks imbues our daily routine with a sense of structure and purpose, ensuring that we navigate our responsibilities with clarity and efficiency. Moreover, adhering to a predetermined break schedule serves as a steadfast anchor amidst the tempestuous seas of our bustling lives. In the midst of chaotic deadlines and demanding commitments, the knowledge that a well-deserved respite awaits us at designated intervals instills a sense of calm and reassurance. It is this sense of anticipation that propels us forward, empowering us to tackle our tasks with renewed vigor and determination. Secondly, disconnect during your breaks. In this digital age, it's easy to get caught up in the constant stream of notifications and emails. But during your breaks, disconnect from your devices. Go for a walk, read a book, or simply sit and enjoy the silence. This will give your mind a break from the constant stimulation and allow you to recharge more effectively. Thirdly, do something you enjoy during your breaks. Use your breaks as an opportunity to do something that brings you joy. Whether it's listening to music, practicing a hobby, or spending time with loved ones, make sure your breaks are filled with activities that make you happy. And finally, be consistent. Taking breaks may feel uncomfortable at first, especially if you're used to constantly being on the go. But trust me, my friends, with time, it will become a habit and you will start to see the benefits in your productivity, creativity, and overall well-being. Taking breaks is not a sign of weakness. It's a sign of self-care and self-awareness. It's a way to ensure that we are able to achieve our goals in a sustainable and fulfilling way. In essence, let us heed the wisdom of scheduling breaks as an indispensable component of our daily regimen. By investing in moments of reprieve with the same reverence accorded to our professional obligations, we manifest a profound commitment to our holistic well-being and long-term success. Now, on to number four. The fourth way to focus on one thing at a time in order to achieve our goals is practicing mindfulness. I know what some of you may be thinking. Mindfulness? What does that have to do with achieving our goals? Well, let me tell you, my friends, it has everything to do with it. In fact, I believe that mindfulness is the key to unlocking our full potential and reaching our desired success. Mindfulness is about being fully present in the moment, without judging or getting distracted. In today's busy world, it's easy to lose focus amid all the noise and chaos. But practicing mindfulness helps us quieten the distractions and focus on what really matters. It helps us be intentional in our actions, which is crucial for achieving our goals. How does mindfulness help us reach our goals? Firstly, it makes us more aware of our thoughts and feelings. Often we're held back by negative self-talk or limiting beliefs without even realizing it. Mindfulness lets us notice these thoughts without judgment and choose to let them go. Secondly, mindfulness keeps us grounded in the present. Worrying about the past or future takes away from what we can do right now. By staying present, we can give our full attention to the task at hand. Lastly, mindfulness helps us act with purpose. Instead of just going through the motions, we approach our tasks with mindful awareness, making every action count towards our goals. Another benefit of mindfulness is its ability to enhance resilience. Let's be honest, the journey towards success is often fraught with obstacles, challenges, and setbacks. However, by practicing mindfulness, we can develop the resilience to navigate through these hurdles with a calm and focused mindset. Mindfulness teaches us to accept the realities of life and approach challenges with equanimity. Instead of becoming overwhelmed by what's beyond our control, we learn to focus on what we can do to progress forward. Yet perhaps the most significant way that mindfulness aids in achieving our goals is by helping us stay aligned with our true selves. In today's society, it's all too easy to get swept up in the actions of others and lose sight of our own path. However, through mindfulness, we can drown out the external noise and attune ourselves to our inner voice. By staying connected to our values, passions and goals, we become less susceptible to external influences and remain steadfast on our chosen path. So, how can we integrate mindfulness into our daily lives? 
It begins with small, intentional actions. This could involve taking a few deep breaths before embarking on a task, or stepping outside for a brief walk to clear our minds. It may also entail setting aside dedicated time each day for mindfulness practices, such as meditation, journaling, or simply sitting in silence. The key is consistency. By making mindfulness a regular part of our routine, with practice and dedication, it gradually becomes second nature, enriching our daily experiences and guiding us towards our aspirations with clarity and purpose. Now let's move on to the third technique for honing our focus and achieving our goals, the Pomodoro Technique. You might be wondering, what exactly is the Pomodoro Technique? Well, it's a time management method devised by Francesco Cirillo in the late 1980s. The term Pomodoro is Italian for tomato, and it's named after the tomato-shaped kitchen timer that Cirillo used to track his work intervals. The concept is simple yet powerful. Break your work into manageable chunks of time with short breaks in between to help maintain focus and productivity. Why is this technique so effective, you may ask? Simply put, it shields us from distractions. One of the biggest hurdles in today's world, with constant notifications, social media, and various other distractions vying for our attention, it's easy to lose track of our goals. However, the Pomodoro Technique empowers us to take charge of our time and focus, enabling us to direct our energy towards our objectives. Let's break down the process. First, select a task to focus on. Whether it's studying, writing, or working on a project, set a timer for 25 minutes, known as a Pomodoro session, and dedicate yourself wholly to the chosen task without any distractions. Once the 25 minutes are up, take a 5-minute break to relax and recharge before commencing the next session. Repeat this cycle four times, and after the fourth session, reward yourself with a longer break of 20 to 30 minutes. You might think that 25 minutes isn't enough time to accomplish anything significant, but it's not about the quantity of time, it's about the quality of time. Working within a limited time frame fosters efficiency and a sense of urgency, boosting productivity. Additionally, the Pomodoro Technique helps prevent burnout by incorporating built-in breaks, allowing us to rest and rejuvenate. Some may argue that they don't have time for breaks every 25 minutes. However, consider this. Do you have time to waste on distractions and unproductive activities? We all have the same 24 hours in a day, and it's up to us how we utilize them. The Pomodoro Technique enables us to maximize our time effectively and wisely. Consistency is key when implementing this technique. It's not a one-off solution, but rather a habit to incorporate into our daily lives. By committing to the Pomodoro Technique, you'll witness a notable improvement in focus, productivity, and ultimately success. So, embrace this method and propel yourself closer to your goals with renewed vigor and determination. I'm going to share with you three powerful strategies to help you eliminate distractions and stay focused on your goals. Firstly, we must identify our distractions. Before we can eliminate distractions, we must know what they are. Take a moment to think about the things that distract you the most. Is it your phone, social media, TV? Once you have identified your distractions, you can take the necessary steps to eliminate them. For example, if your phone is a major distraction, turn off notifications or put it in another room while you work. If social media is the culprit, set specific times during the day to check it and stick to those times. Remember, distractions are not just external factors, they can also be internal, such as negative thoughts or self-doubt. So, be mindful of your thoughts and learn to quiet your mind when needed. Secondly, we must prioritize our tasks. We live in a society that glorifies busyness, and we often feel the need to multitask to get everything done. But the truth is, multitasking is a myth. Our brains are not wired to focus on multiple things at once. When we try to do too many things at once, we end up not doing anything well. That's why it's crucial to prioritize our tasks and focus on one thing at a time. Start by setting clear and specific goals for each day, and then prioritize them based on their importance. This way, you can focus on the most important tasks first and give them your undivided attention. Finally, we must create a distraction-free environment. Our environment plays a significant role in our ability to focus. If we're surrounded by distractions, it's almost impossible to stay focused on one thing. So, it's essential to create a distraction-free environment, whether it's at work or at home. This could mean finding a quiet place to work, turning off the TV or music, or even investing in noise-canceling headphones. Also, make sure your workspace is organized and clutter-free. 
A cluttered environment can lead to a cluttered mind, making it difficult to focus on the task at hand. My friends, I know these strategies may seem simple, but they are powerful. By implementing them in your daily life, you will be able to eliminate distractions and focus on one thing at a time, leading you closer to your goals. But remember, it takes discipline and consistency to make these strategies work. It won't happen overnight, but with practice, you will see significant changes in your ability to focus. Now, I want to leave you with a few final thoughts. As we strive to eliminate distractions and focus on one thing at a time, it's essential to remember that we are in control of our minds. We have the power to choose our thoughts and actions, and that's what sets us apart from other living beings. So, let's use that power to our advantage and stay focused on our goals. Now the number one way to focus on one thing at a time is to create a to-do list. I know what you're thinking. A to-do list? That seems too simple. But let me tell you, this simple tool has the power to transform your life and help you achieve your goals in ways you never thought possible. First and foremost, a to-do list provides clarity and direction. When we have a list of tasks laid out in front of us, it becomes easier to prioritize and focus on what is truly important. It allows us to see the big picture and break it down into manageable steps. As the saying goes, a goal without a plan is just a wish. A to-do list is your plan for achieving your goals. But creating a to-do list is not just about writing down tasks. It is about setting specific, measurable, and achievable goals. Each task on your list should have a clear purpose and contribute to your overall goal. This will help you stay focused and avoid getting sidetracked by less important tasks. Another benefit of a to-do list is that it holds us accountable. When we have a list of tasks to complete, we are more likely to follow through and get things done. It serves as a constant reminder of what we need to accomplish, and gives us a sense of satisfaction and accomplishment when we can cross items off our list. But perhaps the most powerful aspect of a to-do list is that it helps us manage our time effectively. We all have the same 24 hours in a day, but it's how we use those hours that determines our success. A to-do list allows us to prioritize our tasks and focus on what is truly important. It helps us avoid wasting time on non-essential tasks and allows us to allocate our time and energy towards our goals. Now, I want to address a common misconception about to-do lists. Many people believe that a to-do list is a rigid schedule that must be followed to the letter. But that is not the case. A to-do list is a tool, not a prison. It should be flexible and adaptable to changes in our daily lives. Life happens, and unexpected events may arise that require us to adjust our plans, and that's okay. The key is to stay focused on our goals and use our to-do list as a guide to help us get there. In conclusion, a to-do list is a simple yet powerful tool that can help us stay focused and organized as we work towards our goals. By creating a clear plan of action and holding ourselves accountable, we can turn our dreams into reality, one task at a time. So, if you're not already using a to-do list, I encourage you to give it a try. You might be surprised at the difference it can make in your productivity and success.